um, maybe some people could take note of that, and that will obviously inform practice as it should. So uh, this is one of Ian's slides. Uh, I don't know if you showed it earlier on. Um, it's from, from your paper. Um, actually, I got your, one of your slides. So this just shows um, the mortality for people uh, who are undergo screening. Those with uh, without surveillance, men and women, and with surveillance. So mortality is on this axis here. So decreased mortality for people who undergo surveillance. And also, oh, um, the uh, the other thing to mention is that. There are a large number of earlier stage cancers that are identified through screening where cancers are found. So GXA cancers were survival significantly better. So um, we're obviously performing colonoscopy to prevent cancer, in, in, you know, in part, but also to, to identify cancer at an early stage. So um, you can prevent cancer by removing the polyps, in theory. Um, aspirin, I won't, uh, I won't bore you with aspirin then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, but obviously very important. Um, I'm fully behind it. Um, we also consider preoperative testing for Lynch syndrome. Um, so uh, we get the, the the immuno test turned around in about a week now, and um, we use this to inform uh, our surgeons what kind of uh, surgery patients should have. So um, this is a study performed by uh, Henry Lynch and others. One one of many studies actually, which have shown that. Uh, if you, uh, if you have a subtotal or a total colectomy, so your whole or almost your whole colon removed, rather than just the part with the cancer, which is the standard technique, then your risks of surgery are obviously a bit higher, but you're, 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 the likelihood of you surviving is probably uh, a lot better um, if you have a, a more extensive operation, because your risk of having a second cancer in your lifetime is about 25 to 30 percent, um, unless you have the whole of your large bowel removed. Um, so, and there are a number of studies which have shown this now. So, uh, so we now try and get immuno turned around, and somebody we suspect may have Lynch syndrome. And if they, if immuno suggests it, doesn't mean there's a diagnosis of Lynch syndrome. Then we'll say to the surgeons they should cancel the patient to offer them a, a subtotal colectomy rather than a, a, just remove a sigmoid, for example, which is a small part of the large. <coughs> so, um, can I just ask a question about? Uh, you're saying that reduces the risk of. Um, the lifetime risk of getting another cancer by 25 to 30 percent. Yeah. Uh, that is another cancer anywhere in the body, not, the not just or so in the colon. So colorectal cancer, CRC means colorectal cancer. Oh, That's sorry, yes. Yeah. So it reduces the, top, the risk so. of it. Yeah, it no, obviously it won't affect risk cancer anywhere else, um, but it will reduce your risk of bowel cancer. Um, uh, I won't go through this in too much detail because it's been discussed before. This is our algorithm. Um, so uh, anybody fulfills the first criteria, we're, we're extending this to more and more patients now. We will test with immunology chemistry <coughs> on a biopsy sample and colonoscopy rather than the post-op sample, uh, and then we will uh, we'll consider, we proceed down the genetic testing path, pathway from there. And as Ian has alluded to, this is the this is the minimum that should be uh, occurring in, in hospitals and sites around the country. Um, so anybody under 50, anybody diagnosed under 60 with features that suggest Lynch syndrome on, on, uh, under a microscope when we look at the biopsies, anybody with uh, cancers, uh, more than one cancer at once, or those in the family history. Um, after 50, uh, this is 50 here, so the risk of bowel cancer increases because of an accumulated, accumulated lifetime exposure to carcinogens and other environmental risk factors, um, and um, this is, you know, this age is a strong risk factor for any cancer. Um, so anybody who's talking under there, under the age of 50, you know, almost certainly has a very strong risk factor, um, and that's why we pick, that's one of the reasons why we pick those people out. Um, but obviously, you get Lynch syndrome in your 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, in the symptom associated cancer, I mean, I should say. Uh, as Ian mentioned earlier on, um, we now recommend reflex testing for all new cancer, bowel cancer cases diagnosed under 50. And this is uh, in our network a, a metric linked to accreditation of units. So, you, you know, if you want to practice bowel cancer surgery, bowel cancer treatment, then you need to be performing this test. Um, and in a, national, in a survey of, uh, of MD, MDT members around the country um, published last year, 
Uh, there's a, a good deal of variability in the practice of, uh, of testing people under, under the age of 50 for uh, features suggestive of Lynch syndrome. So it's not usual practice. Um, this is what, so, so this is a patient who has two bowel tumours, one, two, plus uh, cancer of the womb. So this is someone who we strongly suspect Lynch syndrome. Um, and, our, uh, and we look at, if we look back, if we look at MDTs again, the number of patients who are actually being tested for Lynch syndrome who fulfill these criteria is, is less than 5%, even at, at uh, major cancer centres, unfortunately. So, uh, we know that if we institute a service as we did in our local hospital, then we can in increase the number of patients who should be tested appropriately. So, the blue column is those who should be tested. So, the red column is those who should be tested, and the blue who were tested, and this is before and after the service. So, you can see there's a big improvement. Um, and obviously there are different strategies for identifying those who are, are likely to have Lynch syndrome. Everyone, as they do in the United States and major cancer centers now, they won't just test for Lynch syndrome, they'll test for all kinds of genetic risk factors. Um, everyone under 70, the resources need to be realigned to, to try and achieve that. Unfortunately, we're not even meeting from the 50s at the moment. Um, <coughs> Then further down the line, so you've had your surgery, you've decided whether to have a limited or a subtotal colectomy, and then it comes back that the tumour may have invaded through the wall of the bowel, and so chemotherapy is being considered. It might be on the borderline. So European Society of, of, of Oncologists, European Oncologists, um, came up with guidelines in 2012 that said that you should test tumours for um, the molecular characteristics of Lynch syndrome, um, and these. These characteristics won't be found in just Lynch syndrome patients, but they do affect how well the chemotherapy is likely to work. So the chemotherapy may not work, in, uh, certain chemotherapies may not work as well in patients with uh, Lynch syndrome or those with similar features in the tumours. So uh, our oncologists will, off, will now consider testing for this, where the benefit of chemotherapy is very borderline, and very, perhaps the evidence for giving chemotherapy is weak. Um, and that's based on the, these ESMO guidelines. Um, so having Lynch syndrome maybe comes into this decision-making process for what kind of chemotherapy you might have as well. Um, the good news is that there's, some, there's reasonably good evidence that survival for patients with Lynch syndrome who have cancer diagnosed at the similar <coughs> stage to someone who doesn't have Lynch syndrome is, is better. Um, perhaps this is because the immune system is activated to a greater extent in people with Lynch syndrome and the immune system is, a, is like kind of a, is equivalent to a, our body's own chemotherapy in many respects. Um, so we performed a national survey of hereditary colorectal cancer services in the UK, also published last year. Uh, Sue Flower and I, is a, who runs Paul Post's Registry at St. Mark's Hospital. Um, and we asked a, que a couple of questions, basically uh, who you are and who you think should be managing patients with Lynch syndrome. Um, and generally the answer was, I am X and I think somebody else should be doing it. Um, <laughs> which, uh, um, which is what we suspected. Um, we think clinical geneticists to do it, but there's not, there's not on your MDT. Um, there are only 61 in the country. Who's going to do it? And, and the patients are not having it. So, um, so obviously this is an issue which we're trying to address. Um, um, so, uh, and you've probably been aware of the Bile Cancer UK Never Too Young campaign. Um, which has a big focus of this campaign has been uh, patients, well, it's basically for patients under 50 uh, diagnosed with bowel cancer. Uh, but a big focus of this campaign has been uh, around Lynch syndrome because it's, it's, it's one of the most fixable issues, you know. It's like it's so easy to do this so well, and uh, that's, you know, <laughs> I've managed to recruit 650 families with a family history in my clinic in, in three years. And, um, uh, but the, the, these patients didn't have any kind of structured pathway for the, their care um, until I came along because I had an interest in it. Um, because people think somebody else is doing it. And it's, it's just, there's so much that can be done so easily to improve things and make things better. Sorry, I've been told to hurry up. I'm almost finished. Um, so <laughs> we recommend a hereditary cancer service as a dedicated lead, testing for Lynch syndrome of diagnosis, maintaining a screening registry, a weekly clinic, where patients can attend rather than going to all kinds of different clinics uh, and links to regional genetic services as we have. Athlete does genetic counselling for, uh, for our clinic. Um, and we have referral routes from the colorectal cancer MDT, from GPs, clinical genetics, 
sometimes they get referred patients and then actually we'll see them in the local hospital and uh, as well as other specialty uh, outpatient services and endoscopy. So the patients who have picked up an endoscopy have been screened for years and years who never, nobody ever thought about referring them for genetic testing. Um, um, and here are a couple of, uh, couple of uh, cases just to wrap up. So this is a, a family with uh, people with the red corner here. They have um, colorectal cancer, bowel cancer, and one person at uh, 37. So they fulfill um, Amsterdam criteria for Lynch syndrome. So they can be screened and tested for Lynch syndrome. Um, this is another case. So this is a guy here, came to clinic. His mum was diagnosed with colorectal and endometrial cancer at age 38 in the late 1990s in our, in our hospital. Um, but uh, uh, she unfortunately passed away as a consequence of it. Um, and he came asking about screening. So we can, what we could do with, with consent is obtain body specimens from his mother's tumour from 15 years ago and, and test them for features suggestive of Lynch syndrome. So we can go down that route. So if you haven't been affected yourself with cancer, but you're, you know, you're here, for example, because of family history, there are a lot of, th lot of things that genetic services can do to, to uh, investigate your family history and try and, and, and pick out an underlying uh, genetic uh, cause. Um, in most cases, however, somebody like this, you know, they, they won't have, it won't be Lynch syndrome, I will say that, but in this case it was. So, um, that's it essentially. Thank you very much. <laughs>
genetic counsellor goes now if, if our, one of our cancer geneticists can't go. Yeah. So there should be provision for that at least in some way. I mean, we have an MDT in South Wales. We do everything from Pembroke East, right? So everything comes into one centre. So that may be the way that it is done, that people stop doing things small scale and it goes upscale so that you can provide better services, which is generally the, the way things are going. Um, we need recommendations on how, how you were treated, because oncologists say, oh, you've got, you've got leech, is, do, do we do that differently? Yeah, it is yeah. a total postcode lottery. Yeah, in, yeah. The um, in the like, for example, the, the, I mean, Ranjit mentioned this morning, you know, the, the, or somebody mentioned, oh, um, my, my gynae surgeon said, I've got genetic ovarian cancer. And probably they were thinking of a BRCA-related ovarian cancer, but the biology of the Lynch ones is different. So what you apply to one probably doesn't apply to the other, and yet in their mind it's all the same, and it's something strange, and we don't do that. So you won't get HRT simply because. So it's, we need to sort all those things out in, in one good book that people can refer to. It's one of the reasons why we're uh, ill. Uh, yes. So think about screening through bowel cancer screening centers only for Lynch patients. Yes. Um, Okay. Okay. Lynch syndrome, how important is it that you have the colonoscopy every two years rather than, say, two and a half years? And is, is two years Life or death, sufficient, say, yeah. or should it, might it even be better well, to have every 18 months? If Even expert colonoscopists can miss cancer as a colonoscopy. Uh, you, you can certainly miss polyps. So I think if you leave it too long, the risk, I think, the main... The main risk is that the part that was missed the last time now has had a few more years to grow. Um, so I think it's, mm. and the average wait, average wait is about three years, I think, in the UK for lynch patients for the loss can be. So. I, that graph that Kevin showed, that came from the health economic analysis of Tristan, was based on the best the NHS could manage at the moment, which is three yearly, so that we couldn't have the accusation thrown into saying, oh, well, that's if everybody had it two yearly. Actually, so that analysis comes out as even if we only could manage what we do at the moment, it would still be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but hold on, I know of things. You're going to sort it out, yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, don't be too distressed about the two two year you know, argument. You have to be forced Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's important. You should get it done. Does somebody have a question yeah, there? I was just going to say, um, it is a bit of a lottery. I find um, that I actually have to manage my own care, even having had um, ovarian cancer and a uh, sister with um, <coughs> metastatic bowel cancer and mum with esophageal cancer. Da, da, da. Um, and obviously I still find that I have to manage my own care because there's not really um, a follow-up. So it's down to me to make the calls or to go to my... So the GP whose eyes roll back thinking, oh my god, it's the hypochondriac again, what do we do with that? Yeah. Um, well, it's a problem faced by many people with rare diseases, uh, which this gentleman can certainly talk to us about as well. I don't know if you want to answer that. It's just that I, I I'm do... I'm going to talk about rare disease management generally. Yeah, because that's exactly, that's exactly the kind of problem that many people with rare diseases, well, you know, relatively rare diseases face, you know. I, I do um, feel as though, because if you, if you do tend to do your own research and things, and I also feel like, who am I to, when I last had my... my um, my scope said, oh, you've got uh, two tubular adenomas in your fending uh, colon and blah, blah, but you're fine, we'll see you in three years. And I think, who am I to tell you as a consultant? I don't think that, that I, I think that's going to give me an anxiety attack for the next couple of years. That's why I think yeah. one person should take an interest and make sure that it's all <coughs> coordinated, uh, the pathway's coordinated, because I can over, I can just say, see you in a couple of years, I can overrule it. <laughs> Because I do. That's why I, I look back and I see when the next colonoscopy is being booked for, and I'll change it. If it's too if it's too short, I'll put it back as well. You know, it's it's like we only screen people where there's benefit as well. On the other side of the scale. Need more of you around the country. What's that? Need more of you around the country. Can we clone? Oh, <laughs>